and that's what you feel actually so it's a release mm. it's a mm. release and after that you're lighter and you may not even remember what you released and that's also not relevant because it's in the past i help you become ceo of self L like our talk now we laugh a lot because we can see the humor in things and so this video is going to inspire you give you some ideas or at least maybe one little thing that you can use and once you start clearing out all that silent saboteurs you come to a place of empathy and compassion not for anyone else but for yourself like subscribe and share today is a beautiful sunny day and on a sunny day we generally smile we feel good and we may decide to put on something bright and we didn't coordinate it but we are both in similar colors and we both i mean dear friend Rahila Khan and i i'm in romania she's all the way in south africa thank you technology and um we had a recording and already published it for those who missed it uh earlier this week and we decided to have another talk because there's much more to share uh this one is going to be less of an interview more of a real conversation and for those who don't know us uh my name is Lotfi Mrat I do help people break through blockages, inspire them to take the next step in their lives, to start following their passion, to discover who they truly are and what they came here to do. And I do that in different shapes and forms using different tools, uh, whether it is in a playful way or dealing with heavy trauma, it doesn't matter. Everyone has his own unique needs and his own unique way in doing things and I adapt to that. And Rahila is an amazing co amazing coach. Um she offered me a session after we did the talk last time and I will be sharing about that too during this talk. But first I will give her the opportunity to share who she is. Rahila, up to you. Hi Lotfi, thank you so much for having me and also I extend a very warm uh warm greetings to everyone who's tuned in to our podcast today thank you so much for having me yeah i so enjoyed the the one we did during the week and uh i'm sure this one will be just as exciting thank you so much for giving me this opportunity yet again thank you thank you thank you you're very welcome the pleasure is also mine because talking with you is fun i mean we've been talking already for yeah an hour actually over an hour already and of course we had again some technical issues which i can only laugh about i don't know why but i just start laughing and i think that's that's a healthy way of approaching um troubles in life things that don't go as we think they should go uh, we should be less serious and it's interesting yesterday i was talking with some people and we talked about that yeah we should be less serious we should be more playful more relaxed see the humor in things i mean it's not like you can change some things sometimes why not just laugh about it a beautiful example is what's happening in the world all the craziness whether it's the elections in the us or wars here and there and what politicians are saying and people are so upset about it but just take one step back and look at the comedy shows that we're watching that we laugh about most of what you see in the world did play out in a comedy show already and then we were laughing our asses off but because it's suddenly real then oh it's so bad but if it doesn't affect you personally why to be so stressed about it just detach and observe the world and see the humor in it but you can only do that i guess if you know that things are happening for a very good reason and that the world is 
transforming um, with a raise of vibration and awareness. And you have been hearing, if you're watching us, then you probably already know about the awakening of people. And I keep hearing and I keep seeing myself that more and more people are waking up. So detach. And part of the awakening is the work we do on ourselves. And the reason that we are now able to see the awakening of others is because we have been working ourselves for decades in some cases. And for me, it's literally, yeah, 20 years now uh, that I've been actively working on myself. So congratulations, 20 years. <laughs> See, I'm laughing uh... again because it's funny. It's <laughs> It has not always been a good, a nice ride. It has been horrible, especially in the beginning. But looking back, I'm happy I did it. And I can see the humor in also how I was so stressed about things. And now look at that. That was nothing. So, and this brings us to the session uh, we had and that you wanted to, to share something about because you wanted, wanted to share about the the methodology you, you use so that people can understand uh, at least one very nice way of transforming uh, blockages into your assets. So yes, please take on from here and I'll jump in when I feel something. Sure. You know, um, we spoke about it earlier in looking at the various modalities and self-development strategies that are out there. I've trained in a few. Um, for me, what stood out was the journey method by Brandon Bayes in how we can use um, emotional mastery to, to master our behavior, our thoughts, our emotions, and, you know, you summed it up so beautifully right at the beginning where you, you spoke about trauma and how do we handle trauma. So, yes, we can only uh, laugh about it when we come through it on our own, where we release our own pent-up rage, anger, irritation, resentment, yeah, or even the war, or whatever it is. What I uncovered with using the journey method is how to address the toxic generational patterns and pathologies, um, learned behavior, conditioning, and negative belief systems. Did you know that every thought, every emotion that we have is not our own? Even a negative belief is not our own. Um, you know, when there's no greater awareness, we don't realize the familial trauma that's there, that's stored in the cell receptors. Uh, for those who are interested, I would encourage you to vis visit the Journey website. It's www.thejourney.com. In the description, you'll find it. Yes. And where you would discover how Brandon Bayes has scripted the, the process work itself, and these are also available on the website. So anyone has access to healing themselves one way or another. Um, what I found for me, this was a standout methodology because it worked for me. And the more I used it on myself, the more people asked me, Rahila, what are you doing because you're looking so good? What are you doing that you're working with such hectic cases and such deep trauma, but how do you look so good? You're actually looking younger. And True, um, true. Compared to when we met uh, four years ago, yes. Yeah, I can say the same for you. So here's the thing, right? So we were doing the outreach project at Correctional Services in Durban, and we had a pastor come in. He was a very young pastor. He was of Zulu origin, and we'd often meet at the reception area, and we began speaking about what we do and uh, Pastor Sandile. And he said, but Rahila, what is this magic potion that you have, you know? Uh, you're looking so young. What is the secret? What is the magic potion? So I'd always tell him the journey, you know? And everyone knew us about the journey method. 
So he said, oh, okay, I really want to know what's it all about. So we both teamed up. He was doing it from a spiritual perspective of using the Bible and the teachings of the Bible. I would come from the teachings of the Quran, for example, and or the science, the science behind the methodology of the journey. And we, we actually facilitated a process together with the group of juveniles. We were in the juvenile section of correctional services. And we did it in tandem without preparing. It was the most amazing uh, experience for me in how we each brought our skills and the fact that we were passionate about what we were doing, the audience just bought right into it. And so much healing happened and there was a greater understanding of religion and spiritual care and, and spiritual intelligence as we spoke about in our previous uh, recording. So in the, with the chat we had earlier, we were talking about different self-development strategies. For some people, it could be through play, um, through doing physical activities. And all of that is excellent because it gets the brain to switch from being very serious and, and being in your pity party, as it were. Oh, poor me, my life is the worst. Yet, yeah, and yet, Everyone is going through something worldwide. It's the same consciousness, if you're looking at it. However, when we understand how certain modalities work, we can use it. I find the journey method so effective, and therefore I only use that methodology uh, in all my case studies when we did the outreach work, because it came from Journey International in how we use the methodology. So journey work was the key strategy used in all my case studies and also in the outreach work. So what, what I learned for myself is how to master my emotions. Do you know an emotion will only begin or arise depending on your thought? For example, if you have a thought about say violence, because it's happening in my home, okay? My parents are violent or there's somebody who's very toxic. And violence is not necessarily only physical violence. Violence can be verbal abuse, psychological abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse. All that is violence. It's very violent, toxic energy. What uncovered in, in working with with these types of, of issues, it all goes back maybe six generations back. It's a familial trauma that we're carrying, and it's passed from generation to generation to generation. And most of us are not in awareness of that. So wherever we are in the world, we will attract our past toxic generation, whether it's your boss, whether it's a war or something happening somewhere. Because once you heal it, you don't attract it anymore. And therefore, like you said, you can laugh about it because you see yourself in that play or in that drama. And then you, you kind of have some kind of detachment because now you become the observer of it. Because you, it, it doesn't trigger you anymore. There's no resonance within you about it. And that is where we can come to total peace uh, just being calm in the worst traumatic event, I can be very, very calm and yet handle it very well. Why? Because I've released all my triggers through emotional mastery. And, you know, you were sharing something very interesting about you, Ukraine and how uh, you were working with refugees in, in Romania, for example, and the energy that children bring from the Ukraine and how, how are they dealing with it, where certain programs have been offered to them? And, you know, you can commend Romania for that. And that's why I think it resonates so deeply with me, you know, in what you were sharing, because that's the kind of work we do here as well in the outreach work. So when we look at children, they, they're so heavy with the energy of trauma, losing loved ones, or even the physical pain that they, they don't know how to have fun anymore. 
And therefore, these these experiences of where they put into a program where they they deal with trauma through play, through coloring, you know, or activities like that, it gets the brain to switch to another mode, as it were. And in a very fun, playful way, you would find some shift happens in the energy field. Okay, that's one way of dealing with it. The other way of how we work with it is we would get them into a group and say, we all are experiencing, we have experienced the flooding. In our province, we had two floods in a space of one year, not even a year, a couple of months. And in working with children and families, you know, we go to the place of where do you feel the hurt and pain in your body? How does it make you feel that you saw somebody sliding in the mud or somebody who was fighting for their life in, in the waves of the flood, flooded river, something like that. And then they would unpack it in the elicitation of the questions that we asked, that they're venting and they're unpacking it. And the moment we go to the fear, we ask them to close their eyes and bring all the, the focus and awareness into that part of the body where the fear is. And in using the breath, we ask them to breathe into it because now we accessed way in the body, the shutdown happened at that moment of that traumatic event. And when that happens, they are releasing it. you just using the breath without words. It's the most amazing thing. And instantaneously, they can have a conversation with bringing a higher frequency energy of people who believe in God or in Jesus or in some prophet, we welcome like a guardian angel. And, and most people believe in angels, especially children. So they're talking to something in the unseen realm, yet in inventing and, ex and sharing the experiences, you'll find a biochemical change happens. It alters the whole biochemistry because they're releasing to something greater outside of self. And in that moment, you will find the whole physiology changes in how they are releasing to God or the infinite intelligence or to, to anyone that's of a higher vibrational energy field. And then in the reframing, we'll say, if God was there and if the angels were there and they were carrying you, how would it be different for you, the whole experience? Say, ah, but that was my lifeline. God was carrying me. Or God was carrying my parents or someone, you see? And in that way, they tend to release their toxic emotions. And then we do the reframing and give them some inner resourceful states that would have helped them at that time. Like, breathing where they couldn't breathe, giving them oxygen or inner strength and courage and other inner resourceful states like that. So it's really interesting. And, you know, you can also share your experience in a bit as well, um, you know, about how you released your emotion. So it's, it's quite exciting when we have all these tools that we take self-responsibility for how we feel, what we think, and our behavior in that way, where we diffuse all the toxic energy. And if we can teach children to do that, how amazing our world will become and future humanity. So people may ask, what does it really mean to work on yourself? How do you work on yourself? Generally, people think that's like, yeah, going to fitness which is in part working on yourself because you put your body in action, in motion. We spend way too much time sitting on our lazy asses and it's very bad for our health in general, not just gaining body fat, but it, it's bad for the circulation, for a lot of things. But the real work on yourself is, to re-quote you, taking responsibility and it's, Stepping out of being a victim, stepping out of the world is doing all this crap to me. It's bringing me all these shitty people, all these shitty events. And going into, okay, 
as a soul, I, I decided to be here. I chose to have some challenges. And this is all a game. And in a game, we try to find the best way to go from A to B. And some people get really upset when they lose in a game or when they have a setback. But some people are just relaxed and enjoy the game. And so maybe you should pick up playing board games to let go of all that seriousness. And from there, you can take that playfulness into your life. And one of the things that I started with, with working on myself, was to do short meditations. The three-minute meditation that I talk a lot about, because that was something I could handle. I could not sit still for half an hour. Ooh. An hour meditation I would fall asleep because I was tired. But a three-minute meditation I could do, and it would help me to empty my mind and get clarity again. I would always say to people... There's always a toilet nearby, assuming you are at work and you have all the stress, go to the toilet. The first three minutes, nobody will bother you. And take deep breaths, just make sure it's not a smelly place. And then you will see when you go back to your desk, you will have more clarity. You, you suddenly can connect the dots and you can approach things uh, more efficiently. And of course, after that came much more because I was open to it. So people came on my path. You came on my path. Uh, 16 years into the journey. Uh, but before that, there were other people who came and who would share things with me, how they dealt with things, what they discovered worked for them. And so it doesn't really matter how you start, where you start, but start doing something. And when you're open, people will come in your path. Maybe you don't know us, and this is the first time you see either of us, which means you're open. That's why you caught this video. And so this video is going to inspire you, give you some ideas, or at least maybe one little thing that you can use. And from there, you can start building up your own journey with the people you need to help you. Maybe it's one of us, maybe it's both of us, maybe it's none of us. It's fine. But do something. All the successful people in the world, all without exception, have mentors, and have their coaches when they have issues to deal with. And if you look at it in a very corporate way, they always find people who are smarter than them and better than them at doing something they're not good at. And that's how they become successful. So using that, you can say, okay, I'm not good at working on, on myself yet, but hey, there are people who are good at it. So go talk with them. They may share with me something that I can also do. And of course, you may start searching in the beginning until you find the person you resonate with. And the more you do that, the easier it becomes, which also means you will start to listen more to this. Because when you listen to this, you will very easily pick the people or the one person in the whole room that you resonate with. And that will bring you some insights, maybe some knowledge. Or you have something to share for that person. Say, ah, thank you for this talk. It helped me realize some things. And you see, it's not that difficult. It can be that simple of just having a talk and making a difference in someone's life and somebody making a difference in your life. So taking responsibility is not per se a heavy thing. That's also a belief that taking responsibility means you take a huge load on your shoulders. Well, taking responsibility is shedding off all that crap that's on your shoulders that you have been carrying around for so many years, so many decades. Might I expand on um, <clears throat> the two words, self and responsibility? Um, just taking a step back, I was sharing about your to toxic thoughts, emotions, and how it impacts in the body with your behavior. Self-responsibility means when you are clearing out a traumatic incident or experience coming from the past, it's taking self-responsibility because in the reframing, you will actually uh, take responsibility. You see, self is me, self, 
And responsibility has two words as well, response and ability. It's, it's having the ability to respond in difficult situations. And that creates the inner healing and, and also gives you more resilience. So if something happens again in the future, because you dealt with it, you healed it to some extent, you will have the inner resourceful states in having greater resilience to maneuver through it. And in that moment, you can handle your trauma, right? In that moment. Because when, when you're fighting this big tidal wave, you think you're all by yourself. And the more resistance we have towards healing our issues, the greater the struggle. It's like pushing around a iron ball up a hill with your nose because you're making it difficult for yourself. So the best thing is not to have the resistance. Let the ball roll. It can hurt you. Yes, healing yourself is a very painful experience. So yes, you're, gonna, you're going to get thrown it's like being in the washing machine. You know, you get rinsed out, washed it out, squeezed out, and spat out. So, inner work is exactly the same. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Please stop here for a moment because now so many people are run away. It can be. I want to. I want to 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 fight you a little bit. It can be painful, but it's not always painful. Like, like our talk now, we laugh a lot because. We can see the humor in things. And I'm not thinking back at all the pain I experienced. I think back about at all the, oh, I feel so much lighter. So yes, sometimes it, it, it is about ve being very painful, but it's not only painful. So just want to clarify this for people, not to get yeah. scared. Of like, oh, I'm never going to work on myself. I'm just going to get <laughs> drunk and that's it. Numb all my feelings. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to clarify it, but nevertheless, thank you. You know, it's good. It's good that you highlighted that because it is that simple and yet it is not, you know. I think having a good having a good coach is important. Having a good facilitator that can take you through whatever. I tell you what, with the with the journey modality. You know, I facilitated thousands and thousands of people of all ages. And you spoke about meditation. It's actually like a, a 40 minute meditation where you're full on in presence of, of uh, like, it's like something divine is holding your hand and supporting you to go back into that space of the hurt and pain. Yes, you're going to cry, you're going to feel what you need to feel. But that is what liberates your soul. And then you flip it around in the reprogramming. And then you see, ah, I see a new perspective to it. Actually, it wasn't that bad because now I have a new understanding of it. You know? Um, and it's good to cry because so often we are told, boys don't cry, men don't cry. Hello, everybody must cry. It's healthy for you. It's it's such an amazing cleansing process, you know. Uh, Lotfi, you experienced it. You know when I spoke about taking you through the washing machine in your in your session this week. Maybe you could share, but in how you went through the washing machine and you got you came out better for it. You know, it's not all that bad. Um, sorry, you know, if I did make it seem. No, 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 um, no, 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 like no, no, a not no. so good experience. I just use that as an analogy because <clears throat> there's so many different layers to uh, something that needs clearing. And therefore, I say again, you need an excellent facilitator to take you down those layers to the silent saboteurs that's obscuring you from living your life to your full potential. And once you start clearing out all that silent saboteurs, you come to a place of empathy and compassion, not for anyone else, but for yourself. You'll have so much of compassion for yourself. 
because you learn how to hug yourself. You will learn how to open your heart to yourself first, not to everyone else, because we always put ourselves last in the queue for love. So how can anyone love you if you're not loving yourself? You see that? So in order to find the real you, the authentic you, you've got to cut through those layers. So it's a process. It's a lifelong process because we are carrying generational patterns of our entire ancestral lineage. So as much as we have these toxic patterns and pathologies, our ancestral lineage also gave us great wisdom, as you discovered, the wisdom of how money works, the wisdom of how to use your money better. You know, now because we lack certain skills, we don't see it. So it's easy to play the blame game or have this pity party. Oh, poor me. Uh, you know, you will, you, you will repeat your sad story to everyone. But that is victim mentality. So the other V word is victim mentality. How do you become the victor? The victor will come up when you have your own victories of your own self-empowerment techniques of how you break through all those um, cobwebs, as it were. So once you start breaking those threads, something happens within you. You come to a place of total freedom where you laugh at yourself literally when you see it, you know. And it's not, we're not making light of trauma. By no means are we making light of any trauma. We are encouraging people to seek help and to find the right people because even a book can become your mentor. You know, uh, the person who wrote the book, but you don't have access to the author, but you have access to the knowledge that's there, the wisdom that's shared. And that itself can mentor you through some of your stuff in, in what's written there and how to facilitate yourself, in other words. So all these little self-development strategies are key to coming into greater awareness of what happened in your family history, what happened in the relationships there, so that you don't recycle it um, and you do better with it, with better skills in how you, that's why I always say in my profile, in my headline, I help you become CEO of self. I'm, I'm focused on creating CEOs of all ages, from the unborn baby to the CEO of the company. The CEO of self is about self-responsibility. How do I take responsibility for clearing out my inner clutter so that I only attract love and empathy and compassion because I have it for me. I'm showing it to myself first, so others do the same. You see, I love, honor, and respect myself, and others do the same. You'll only attract that because that's the energy you're putting out. The energy you put out is what you will receive. And, um, you know, it's it's like, you have to go into the heart of the pain to allow the light to come in, to heal that wound. Otherwise, it's going to be a recurring pattern. And that's not going to be very helpful to any of us because why are we attracting all of this? Why are we attracting war? Because of our own inner war. That's energy you put out. What are you going to get? You're going to get wars and conflict because you haven't released it. Your inner programming is, is projecting that. So everything is a projection of self. So where is the violence? The violence starts in the home. It started in past generations where we were unaware of that. Nobody told us about it. But now we know and with social media, there's no excuse for anyone not getting help. True, true. Isn't it? So, yeah. So tell me about your experience, uh, Abert. Um, I will go straight to the part of the pain and the crying. Mm -hmm. um, those who have been watching previous episodes 
and the one with Cameron, uh, I did cry as well because there was an emotion that had to be released. <clears throat> so you you can see that actually happening live there because we touch a certain subject. But in our session, and it reminded me a lot of another session I've had in 2013 when I went to a shaman because I felt that has there was pain inside me that I had to release pain and sadness. I could feel it was keeping me from moving. It was a heaviness. And in that session, I just laid down and the lady was going to do a drum session and she just hit the drums like once, one, boom. And I just started crying. And I cried for about 40 minutes nonstop. And it was so painful. But there was so much pain coming out. So I was reliving and sometimes only feeling all the pain coming out. But after that, I felt so much release. And after that whole session, I literally felt lighter walking. And I chose to walk a very long distance that normally I would take a bus for, just to be in nature and, and to feel. And that was a very big load of pain that I had to release. And for those who haven't done much work, you may need a session where you will release a lot of pain. But it's not just feeling the pain, because we are afraid of feeling pain, but... After that session, I was saying to my friends, oh, it was so worth it. If I feel another blockage, hit me. Give me that. I'll take that pain. I'll take it two hours. I'll take it a full week as long as I can release all that baggage, all that heaviness, all that's keeping me and holding me back. And so after that, I remember I've had a few more times that I had to go through pain and released and felt lighter, but it was only once that was so extreme. And this week, it was minutes. Maybe you remember if it was more than a few minutes, but for me, it was like minutes that when we talked about where my blockages were coming from and we found them in the family tree, it just had to come out and so the pain came out so yes i felt pain i cried but it was a release and for women who have given given birth probably you can make the analogy i mean you yourself do you have children yeah yes yeah, so <laughs> I know Is it a correct comparison about. if I say that? That it's yeah, like yeah, the pain yeah. of letting out and then ah, oh, afterwards yeah. it's the bliss. And yes. So, and for men, okay, if you're stuck and you finally can go to the bathroom and that feeling. So men were like, oh yeah, we know that feeling. Ah, oh, finally, ah, I feel so much lighter. And that's what you feel actually. So it's a release. Mm. It's a mm. release. And after that, you're lighter, and you may not even remember what you released. And that's also not relevant because it's in the past. So basically, the past you were carrying with you, you let it go. So you don't need to remember. Exactly. But what you will experience is, I'm not carrying old shit with me anymore. And who wants to carry old shit with him? Nobody. <laughs> who wants a backpack full of rocks, heavy rocks? Nobody. Yeah, maybe if you want to do some training. I think we've got enough training already carrying around all that old stuff. So let go of the fear of the pain. And I know some people have been going to, and I'm just going to say it out loud, psychopaths. I mean psychotherapists. And I love this cartoon. Where they, and maybe I'll put it on screen if I remember. Uh, Psycho the rapist, because the guy put the word, word, word on the door, but there was not enough space. So it was psychotherapist became psycho the rapist. And I think it's a very correct analogy when people say they're going to help you, but they just let you re-experience the pain, but do not teach you how to release it. So you go for years and years and years to somebody who's sucking up your money 
and you're not recovering because you are just reliving the trauma, but you're not letting it go. And the work that I've learned, and I'm super grateful for this to all the teachers that came on my path, are doing it like you are doing it, Rahila, like I'm doing it. It's about releasing. You do not need to relive everything that happened. Mm. Even if you come with a specific thing, like I was raped, I was assaulted, I was beaten. You do not need to relive everything. You go back to the moment and then we'll guide you to let it out. And once it's out, it's out of your body. And maybe you need to do another session because you need to go deeper and take some deeper layers because we are all with layers like, like, like an onion. We take off layer after layer after layer till we come to the core. But because everything is going faster now, you have noticed that already, it's because of the high vibration of the earth and the space in which we are. And recently I heard we are going through a photon belt and that's why everything is going so much faster. This also goes faster so we can go through multiple layers at a time now where back in the days when I started or when Rahila started, we had to do one layer, and then come back and do another layer, and come back again, and we were taking layers, and every few years, like, oh, I thought I already dealt with this shit. Oh, oh yeah, I need to go deeper, another layer. Now we can do five, six layers in one, and it's gone. So yep. you're lucky <clears throat> now. You can do what we did in 10 years. You can do it in a month, or even in a week sometimes. Sometimes I feel a little bit jealous. I'm not the jealous type, but sometimes I look at the youth and I'm like, Oh, guys, you're so lucky. You would be crying if you would hear what we had to go through to get where we are today. And you just did it like, whoops, in a week. Oh, yeah, whoops, I did it. So don't be afraid. And it's worth the moment because afterwards you have that freedom. And like I said, I don't remember what I, what I released. I remember the, some topics that we touched. But the real stuff, it went out of my body. And I could feel it in my behavior, in my actions, in my talks with people. Yeah, I'm lighter. Yeah. And very quickly, you know, the results are very subtle. And then you will see other things manifesting in a very positive way also. You know, in the way you're feeling one, the way your body is detoxing is another. But like in your reality, you will have good things coming to you because of the load shedding that you did, of the toxic emotions. Emotions are basically is an energy charge that fuels your behavior. And, um, you know, very quickly you can build a story around one word. That could be a trigger. And then the mind will spin the story and then you're cycling in the story and then you'll keep perpetuating that story wherever you go. So therefore, it is very important to heal uh, our past because whatever we took on was meant for us to take on. That is the thing. That is the gift. Your, your present is a carryover from your past. All the hurt, pain, whatever is a carryover to the present, which is reminding you to get through your past so that you can create a new future. And, and when you look at it in that sequence, it is amazing how quickly a better life manifests for you because your, your vibrational energy is much higher at a higher frequency. So you come into alignment with the universal laws. So whatever positive thoughts you have about good health, for example, manifest. Because you will attract the right people who will teach you how to take care of your body, your, your diet, your exercise, your breathing, the simple things in life. Most of it is free. And once we start utilizing all these skills, you will have greater resilience because your body is able to adapt now and to, to, to live a different way as compared to before. And I found like even with illnesses, I have huge success. Um, 
even with men mental illness or any issue for that matter. It can be healed, providing you tell yourself the right story. And the, and the correct story will be one of well-being, not focusing, for example, on the cancer or the terminal illness. For as long as you're giving the disease all your energy, how, how is it possible for you to heal it then? Because you're telling everyone how sick you are and what that illness is doing to you. You're feeling ravaged, so your story is all about how ravaged you are and how you're tired. And this is what the medicine is. Exactly, you're going down, down, down. But the moment you flip it and, and, and you write a new story and say, okay, I have this, I accept it. See, we're not fighting it. Because people say we need to fight cancer. Why do we need to fight it? It's like you're fighting a tidal wave. You're going to drown. Because... In the tidal wave, you don't see the lifeline that God is giving you. But the moment you are calm and say, okay, I have this disease, it's just an energy field, and I can get through it because I have all these different options. Guess what? In that moment of being in the tidal wave, because you are calm, you will see God's lifeline and he'll reel you out of it. Or that infinite, that uh, infinite intelligence will reel you out of the tidal wave, and then you start a whole new way of life, and giving you all the attention in coming to well-being. It's not about the disease. You see, the word dis and ease. The word is ease, and there's a prefix, dis ease. So the dis-ease is the energy field in your body, in your meridians, is not flowing properly. They are blockages. Your chakras are blocked. And the moment you open up all the energy fields and meridians, we had this chat earlier before this recording about how important it is to start your morning with a lemon water, for example, or a beetroot and carrot juice with some lemon and ginger in it with some pepper or turmeric, I think these skills are very, very important. And if we can start this regime in the home, our kids are getting the best medicine. It will become a way of life. And why am I sharing this? Because that's exactly what's happening with the kids in our home, my sister's kids and my own child. When they are ill or have symptoms of flu, they go for those remedies. It's not the doctor they look for. And because they practice it as we, that's why I say leadership begins in the home. CEOs begin in the home. That is where children become CEO of self because they know what to feed themselves, how to manage their bodies. And if you can manage your body, you can manage anything in life because you have the skills. You just replicate the model. And that's how simple healing can be when we you know, unpack it in the way you and I are doing and giving people different options. By no means am I saying that medical science is not needed. By no means am I saying that medicine is not needed. I also take medicine if I need it because I embrace allopathic and alternate medicine. My belief is that food is the best medicine. You know, and that and must fasting. be a way of life. Exactly. And, fasting and it fasts. It's, it's, Absolutely. Fasting is so good for the body. Even if it's intermittent fasting, it's excellent. Or on one day, just only have fruit, one fruit, apples a whole day or grapes the whole day. It depends again on your metabolism and what it can manage. So these little things are very, very important in how we maintain our nutrition, but also in terms of exercise, whether it is the gym, whether it's walk, whether it's yoga. And yogic breathing is amazing. When you practice certain yogic breathing, you can lose up to eight cal 800 calories a day. So I know this because I've practiced it for years. And all the simple things are the self-development you know, development strategies that we can use to empower ourselves. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Um, 
and we don't have to give our power away to someone else to determine how we should heal ourselves. Your body knows best. The infinite wisdom your body has will teach you what it needs. So, you know, Lotfi, I think for you and me, what we were talking about is the inner listening, where we're listening to our biology when we eat certain things, what is it doing to us? And then from there, you map out what your body can tolerate and does not want. And yep. then you create your own, you create your own uh, diet for what suits you because you know your body the best. And that is where we become the best architect of ourselves. Because you know the A to Z of who you are. So it starts with your thoughts, your emotions, your behavior. Once you get that, the next is your well-being of your your mental well-being, your physical well-being. And then it's about reading what information you think you need. You become more discerning and vigilant with all the... That's why it's called the information age. You see that? So yes. with all the information we have, we must decide what's good for us. You can go to your doctor, listen to them, take the advice, but you know best what it is you need to do. And that's what I found works for me. And this is what I teach and facilitate with all my clients. And it everything starts in the home. And it's about rehabilitating a family. For me, I believe that wholeheartedly. We got to restore our families first before you serve the planet and humanity, serve your family first. You know, Mother Teresa said this, if you want to serve humanity, go home and love your family. Yeah. Because that's where leadership starts. And yeah. I think that's where we tend to do more for humanity because we're serving the humanity within us first. What's the point otherwise? Yes, I mean, and what you say, humanity within us first. So <clears throat> even before the family, first you need to take good care of yourself. Otherwise, you cannot be a good support for others. And for that, you need to listen to your body, to your inner voice, what you need, whether it's food or rest or exercise or, or just peace. You need to listen. Yeah. And from there, you can be a better husband, better brother, better son, better whatever mother and mm. then you know you, start you, to you to, made to society yeah sorry lot but you made mm. such a valid point now and i thank you for bringing it up because so many people will benefit from this you know so often i'd get a call from a mom or via whatsapp saying please my child needs help and blah 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 and straight away i know the child doesn't need help it's a parent who needs help you know, therefore, when I facilitate children, I will not do a session with the child if one of the parents did not have a session with me. Because if the home environment is toxic, what is the point of a child being in therapy with me and goes back into the toxic environment? It doesn't help the situation at all. No. So then the, the Empowerment happens, for example, like you getting all this work as a father, you will know exactly how to handle your child. And if he's acting out or knowing something, then you know, you know what? It's a generational pattern. And I passed it on. Whilst the mother was carrying him in the womb, maybe we didn't we didn't behave properly, or there was a war going on, or there was a flood, or there was a death. And that child, just being a bundle of cells, has internalized that trauma. And it plays out. And he doesn't know. He or she doesn't know that. Genetic Can memory. See? Yes. So that is why I liked in what we were sharing, it's so nice for children to play and, and vent at the same time because that is their way of, of, of having fun, because they forgot how to have fun. Most adults don't know how to have fun because we've forgotten, including me. So I was showing my son my older photographs, right? From my, say from 21 onwards. 
And I said, what do you think? Do I look better now or do I look better then? And I could see for myself how stiff and rigid I looked when I was younger as compared to now. <laughs> because yes. I was carrying, you know, like you said, I was carrying all the boulders on my shoulders. And I forgot like how to just be loose and have fun and, and have a sense of humor and dance and sing or do whatever, you know, because the responsibility was too much at that time, you know, because of societal uh, beliefs imposed on us, how to be the academic, how to earn money, how to own your properties. You know, it's all about the social standing. You forget that you're a child. You forgot how to have fun. So, you know, in, in looking at self-responsibility, another very important component of it is forgiveness. Do you know how difficult it is for us to forgive ourselves? What I've found in working with people, many people cannot forgive themselves. You know, uh, they're holding on to whatever. and But even to forgive their parents until they see the gift and the lesson that comes with it. And somehow in it all comes together. So the important component is forgiveness. And forgive also has two words, right? For and give. So if we had to flip it, uh, I'll go back to what you said in terms of our soul journey. Um, every person is there to teach us something. And the most toxic people are put there for a reason. And they are there to teach us our soul lesson. And the main one being how not to be like them. I can so, visualize a lot of people now saying, okay, you taught me, now buzz off. <laughs> but as long as they're there you didn't learn your lesson yet you didn't learn how to change things or set your boundaries or whatever so they're going to stay yeah. until you learn your yeah, lesson yeah. but the thing is you know when you forgive you also like let go and when you let go what happens you are free you grow you evolve and that is where the hum human evolution is accelerated and the consciousness shifts it takes only one person in every family to do it it takes only one person in every million humans to do it in shifting consciousness this is how powerful we are in the energy field that we carry when we are liberated from all the baggage you know like you said when the shoulders are light what happens you want to fly Yes. You you literally fly because you are so light in your being. You become feather-like because there's no baggage that's heavy ah. that's holding you down anymore. Now I realize something, if I may yeah. interrupt, um, about the lightness and the flying. In 2012-2013, I had a dream where I had to let go of the fear of death. Mm -hmm. So in that dream, I was hanging on something and I could not hold on anymore. And I knew it. And I could have held on for a bit longer, but then I would have fell, fell anyway. But then I surrendered okay. and I let go. And I woke up so peacefully. Later, I had a dream, but I never connected the, those dots, that I was flying. And I was going and going, and it felt so good and so natural and normal. Like, not like, oh, I'm in a dream and here everything is possible. No, it was like, it's just normal. I could actually feel in my body how I would just take a few steps and then fly. Mm. And maybe technology is coming that will make this possible for us. I mean, it's very possible, yeah. actually, because there's technology yeah. about the gravity and stuff. Uh, it is there. So, yeah. but I connect now the dots that. One dream, and I know now for a fact, first came the first dream of letting go. And then came the other dream of being light and being able to fly. So, Yeah. Amazing. So the more we clear out the inner clutter, the lighter the body becomes. And then you cut through 
your challenges in such a beautiful, organic way. Because even, even if it's the worst kind of scenario of a toxic person uh, in front of you, have no bearing on you because there's no resonance of that. You'll become the observer and you'll just observe. Yes. And you, there's no attachment to it. And that is where the lessons we learn of detachment and non-attachment. Because we cleared our inner, um, our inner self. So now the fear, you know, here's the thing about love when you come to love yourself. You know, it's like a new couple that's so in love and you feel you can conquer the world with this love. If we can be that on our own, we can conquer any mountain. Well, just being by yourself, you can do it. And and this is what the energy field I'm talking about in when there's no fear, how you can you can cut through your goals and reach the top of the mountain. And coming back and wrapping up the session is every person chooses their own path up the mountain. And we said at the beginning, you'll find your books, you'll find the people, you'll find your mentors. Um, or even in the family, you may find very wise souls. So you take what you get from each of them and know that your wisdom filters carry the wisdom of your ancestral lineage. So the more we clear out the inner cobwebs, the more we have the wisdom to climb up the mountain. And what happens with humans as they climb up the mountain, irrespective of what the beliefs are, and I'm talking about positive beliefs, when you climb up to the top, the view is the same. You see God. You see everything as a divine expression of God, irrespective of who you are, which country you come from, uh, what your religious teachings are. You know, all barriers. It transcends all barriers, this love, because there's only empathy and compassion for the other. And then you would see when somebody rubs you up the wrong way that if it has a resonance within you, then yes, it's your issue that you need to deal with. If not, you're free, you're in freedom. Like what you're talking about, you fly, you keep flying and the right people will gravitate towards you. And this is where your business takes off and you do well. I know this because I'm sharing from my direct experience again of how even money as an energy, you would attract it. That's a law of resonance. So God or the infinite intelligence will put the right people there to find you. You don't need to go and find them. They will find you. And then you will tell them, this is what I charge in fair exchange of energy. And then the sale happens where the product comes together and the money is exchanged. In our case, it's a service that we give. And that is how you grow your abundance. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in growing your abundance, in the skills we're sharing to others and teaching them the path, you're giving them the key to unlock their Pandora box. And that is a legacy we leave behind, Latvi, you and I, or facilitators like ourselves, where we pass on the legacy, we give the others the key and say, unlock your door. And let you be guided. Like others did for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guide them, you mentor them, and then you let them go because they got what they needed from you. And then when they need you, they'll come back to you. And this is such a beautiful way of doing business. This is such an organic way of living life. And these are the things I share in my book as well, where I give you the business principles the principles of marketing and, and all of that in what I use because the fundamentals are the same irrespective of online business or how you're doing your business. The fundamentals are one and the same. I think that, yes, lots have changed, but like if you just take the fundamentals and make it work, it works. Do it, do it for you how you want to do it. And I think self-responsibility extends in every which way of our life then, you know, taking it into business as well. 
and then into community work. You and I are so involved in community outreach work in different ways. So we become leaders in that way as well because people will follow your example. And that's where you become the best exemplar and uh, because you walk the path. Yes, you're not people only, follow you know, because you're... you inspire, not because you tell them to follow. Absolutely. You walk the walk and you talk the talk. I think that is critical in empowering others and, and leadership for me, is I must lead by my own example. Hmm. This, uh... This feeds my soul, this kind of talks. Um, this is definitely not the last time we'll, we'll do a recording. I feel there will be others coming. I want to encourage everyone to go back to segments where you feel like, ah, I need to rehear that again because there's something for me to take out of it or to make notes. Feel free to contact us if you have questions, if you want a session or you simply have a question, put put in the comments or send us directly. Um, the website you talked about will be in the, in the description. The book as well, if you want to buy the book, it's on Amazon. It's in Kindle version, so you don't need to carry around something. It's going to be on your phone or on your tablet. Share what you got as insights. How this talk actually gave you some some path to work, some some decisions to make, even even if they are still at the beginning. But feel free to share because you will also inspire other people who read the comments. Yes, lovely. What would be good? I'm just thinking. Yeah. Um, it'll be nice for whoever's listening who have questions. And if they want us to do it live uh, in taking the questions and we're answering it and you record it because it will help so many other people, you know, in answering the questions. It will make such a difference to, you know, it's exponential growth in a way. So it's a one way of taking this further. And yes. I'm happy to do that. Yes, uh, we can set know, up uh, yeah. a forty-minute uh, yeah. Zoom call, for example, uh, with the people who really want to yes. join us in a conversation. Yes, yes, yes we yes. can do that. Something yes. like that. I think that will be far more meaningful as well in the yeah. direction it takes in the work you're doing, and yeah. you know, putting your services out there. Because I think you are a remarkable facilitator. I've had first-hand experience with you. And you're very masterful in how you couch things and in how you've helped me as well, you know. So I think it's very important that we share this so that uh, everyone benefits from the experience, from our experience, the wisdom we bring. It's It's all about the experience. It's not like talking about something that's not there. Yes, uh, I yes, think yes. that's why we gel so well. Yes, yes. Okay, good. So, those who want, contact me because I'm the one who's going to set it up. Well, I'm Mr. Technology here. So, yes. uh, and then we'll just set a date and uh, we'll go live together. And I don't know if it will be recorded or probably it will not be published, but it will be for you to get first hand experience. And from there, you may be inspired to to go deeper and 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 work more on yourself. Even if you have never worked on yourself, if you're like, okay, I want to have a taste, perfect, join. Yeah. There will be people with different experiences. I mean, whenever I join a group session, I also are surrounded with people who have more experience in certain areas, less experience in other areas. So it's 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 always nice to work together. That's why I like group work anyway. I, I love to work with groups yeah. because you learn from each other, from each other's questions. So often when I get some questions from people, I choose to record a video because then other people who may have had the same question also get the answer. So I often don't answer in one-on-one, -on -one, but I was like, okay, I'm going to make a video about this. I don't say who's, who asked the question, but 
I throw it out there. And that's actually how I record most of my videos. They're a question my, of my own or of somebody else. And then because it's important that we share. But together yeah. we're going to grow stronger. We're going to grow closer and make a difference, have an impact and make the world a better place. Nobody will come Absolutely. and save us all. We are the ones transforming the world we live in. We created the mess and we're going to clean it up and make it a very beautiful place. Again. Absolutely, Latvi. I so agree. I concur with everything you just said. And, um, you know, I remain a humble servant of the universe. I'm still learning. So I'm happy to learn from anyone out there. And uh, my heart is so filled with love and gratitude for you, for hosting me, for allowing me to share in this way, but also listening to you empowers me a lot and gives me so much confidence as well. Thank you for that. And You're also for all welcome. the beautiful colors that you bring. And <laughs> somehow we just resonate, both of us, you know, <laughs> resonate with all the colors. You can see the passion that we have with yes. red and yellows and I mean Orange. all the colors yes yeah yes. because I'm a color therapist as well oh, so I cool. love colors yeah so I also teach using colors especially with children and looking at the different energy centers like blue is excellent for the throat for communication and to keep you calm so for public speaking blue is amazing and we can share so many things, you know, together. So, I will put you in touch you. with a friend of mine who has been working with color since I know it, since 2012. And she went back now to, again, working with colors. I mean, she was always drawing and stuff, and now she's more focused on the colors themselves specifically. So I will put you in touch. Yes. I think you, you will have a very nice conversation about this. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. You enjoyed our last talk. She watched it already. So that's how I know now that she's really focused on the colors because she, we talked after the talk, like, oh, it was really nice. Oh, so, lovely. So this is how I've it done works. A book. Yeah, I've done an activity book, which is available on Amazon as well, called Being Color, How You Can Be Color. And there's some practical exercises and guided visualizations, which is on our YouTube channel. So, yeah. Uh, Send me the link, please, and I will add it in the, in the description for this video. I will, so people most can definitely, access. I will. Yes, so thank you for that. I'd love to meet her. Good. And, her name is um, Pauline, Pauline Faraika for so for those who know her, like, oh, yeah, Pauline, yeah, we know. <laughs> okay. Lovely. She's very, she's a very joyful uh, being. She also has had her, her rough patches in life, but she came out so much stronger and full of love always and joy. It's it's a pleasure. If I'm if I'm in a mood, I know that if I talk with her, yeah, she just it's it's contagious. Her her, her love and joy. Yeah. So yeah, we regularly talk, and we have been doing oh, since nice. 2012. So lovely. Yeah. I'm so happy, and you know, I'm so happy to have you in my circle. Because you do that for me in just in two minutes, just talking and laughing, you know. I love that. There, yeah. there's, you know, it's it's easy. Because we resonate, because we're on the same frequency. And to come back to something you said before about the people we attract, I started attracting more and more people who are like us, who even if they go through hardship, they can still laugh about other things in life and they can still appreciate the beautiful things in mm. life and see that, okay, this is happening, but it's going to get me to a better place. And so most of my conversations the last few years are this kind of conversations going deep. So when suddenly yeah. I'm at a networking event where almost everyone is superficial. It can be like, oh, oh. <laughs> but then I see the few people that can go deep and immediately up and then we have our own bubble within the whole chaos where we have a real mm. conversation like this guy who is going to borrow me a book because we talked about something oh i have this book you should borrow it because there there are some very nice questions and answers and it will help 
help you, blah, blah, blah. So these things happen. That was in a business networking event. Mm. But people think business network is about just business, but it's about connecting. And to, do, yeah. to be good at business, you need to be balanced. So him giving a book like that is going to contribute to better business, of course. Because the more you're balanced, yeah. the better the connections are, the better people you attract, more balanced people. So more successful people, more success for you. And look how everything grows. So for those watching, think about this and try to apply it. And of course, ask your questions if you if you don't know how to do it. Ask for help because it's the smart people who ask for help, who who are not afraid to ask, and that's how they get better. Mm. So you see, we spoke about vigilance, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to be at this what connect the dots. We call this synchronicity. You had to be at this business network platform. You met this person, and he spoke about a book. So, which means that book is meant for you. There's something in there for you, and that's a gift coming from the higher intelligence. And that's where we connect the dots. Of um, you follow the breadcrumbs in a way because it's going to lead you to something bigger. You know. And when you do that, that's where your success, it leads to your success. Uh, in my book, I'm talking about similar things, similar experiences where I may have to meet certain people who shared certain things. When I followed up on that, it took me somewhere else. When I followed up on that, it led me to where I am today. And, with and, a lot of and that's how you create. Yes, and that's how you create abundance and prosperity. Abundance is not about financial abundance alone. Abundance is about your ability to create from source energy, whatever it is you want. And money will show up as an energy field for the gift of what you give in exchange to someone who's needing you at a specific time. So the energy of money shows up and that's where the transaction happens and the sale is done. When the product and the and the money meets, then that's a sale. But now that's an old way of looking at it. The new way in the way we are working consciously is we just look at it as energy field. I'm giving off this energy. Somebody likes that energy and is drawn to me. And then in fair exchange, you will give a price and that energy, because we don't see the money, it's a transaction that's done in the bank. So when we take the concept of money out, it does not exist. Only an energy field exists. And that's how you grow rich. The parrot agrees, as you can hear. Exactly. <laughs> He's yellow too, by the way. It, He's chirping our song, you know. <laughs> but yellow is joy and abundance and all of it, Latvi. Yes. Harvest. So thank you very much for, again, a beautiful talk. I'm looking forward to the talk with those who have questions. Yes. So I'm not going to set the date. I want you guys first to contact us, preferably me, because then I'm going to do the whole setup. Because you need to take the first step. Once you take the step, you show the initiative, the support will come. Whether it is in people, it is in products, it is in finances, it is in time, it will come. But it's very important mm -hmm. that you take that first step. Until I didn't take that first step, my mentor did not show up. He was there already, flying around. But when I took the step, then he was available. And then yeah. he helped me for 10 years. And I learned a lot from him. And that's a big part of what I'm paying forward now. So take that damn first step. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll yes. talk. Yes. Thank you, Lotfi. Thank you so much for everything. Have a everything. beautiful day. 
beautiful I will. continuation. Thank, thank you. you for your time. And I must see thank you, soon. you. Yes, and have a fabulous weekend. Love you lots. Take care. Bye. Bye. Like, subscribe, and share.